time I left home. I was seven. It was all because of my brother Michael. I didn't like him. He was always beating me up and telling mum of me, get me into trouble. So one day, I wrote in my notebook, I hate Michael because he's always beating me up. And so I've decided I'm leaving. A net full of holes was devised, written and performed by members of the second wave Young Women's Arts Project at the Albany Empire in November 1984. It was the result of 11 months of workshops, discussions and research done by the girls into the causes and effects of female homelessness. This video shows different stages of getting that play together, using extracts from the workshops, discussions, tour of hostels and the finished piece. Michael found it and showed it to my mum. And she cussed me and she beat me and she sent me to my bed. The second time, I was eight. None of the women in the group had had any previous drama experience before. The workshops were designed to build up their confidence, getting to know each other, raise their consciousness about certain things and about themselves. How did your parents react when you first left home? My mum for a wobbly because I was only about 16 at the time and that's when I moved to East London. Mm -hmm. And the day I left it was pouring down and rain and it was really bad. She gave me my cab there. She said to me, why do you have to go? Why can't you leave till tomorrow? I said, if I leave until tomorrow, I'll never go. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it now. And she really freaked out. And when I got to Sandra's place, I found her and I sat there and talked to her on the phone for an hour. Trying to calm her down, she freaked out. She thought I got raped, mugged, molested, murdered. <laughs> and, I mean, for the hour and a half it took me to get there, she just sat there and literally chewed her finger and I was down to the quick, you know. Does she come, want you to come back? I mean, does she? Yeah, she really resented Sandra for the fact that Sandra put me up. Mm. You know, she, I used to ring up to her, Sandra said she wants to say, I don't want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, she'd never met her, she had nothing against her, but I think she resented the fact that she took her baby away from home. Good evening, Angie. Do me a favour, go sit to the meet. Have Ma a nice day. Mum? Yes, dear? Can I talk to you? Oh, yes. Are you working tomorrow? Mum? Yes, dear? I'm thinking of leaving home. Don't let the meat burn. Mum, what? I'm leaving home. I don't understand. I'm moving out. I'm moving in with a friend. Moving? When? Next couple of days. Next couple of days? What friend? To go to Bandit or Bandit with one of the spanker spanker boy you meet last week? Is that so, NG? No. You sit in that chair. You're 18 years of age. You find yourself a job. And now you want to leave? No, Angela. Mom, I'm leaving. I said no. You can't stop me. You want to try me? You can't stop me going out not coming back. You've been thinking about it? Yes, I want to live my own life. You live your own life. I want to be a woman, a free woman, and find out what it's like out there. Oh, Lord, tell me what this silly child is talking to me about. Mum, what you said about the table, about wanting to be free. You're about the same age as me. Mum, you can't have forgotten. No, I haven't forgotten. Angela, that big blasted world don't care. I can't. Oh, Mum, listen, I know, I know all that. But see, we've got the place, it's big enough for me and Ali. I've got a job, I earn money. You taught me how to look after myself. I feel so excited that Mum, I've got to understand. Angela, there are some bad, bad people out there. For God's sake, Mum, I'm, I'm not going to be on the street. You're not going nowhere. God, you make me mad. You're all I've got. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Mum, don't cry. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me something. 
What's your name? Ali Cat? My name is Ali. Oh, gosh, Mum, please. Tell me, where is this place of yours? Oh, it's just a bus ride away in Catford. Listen, let me tell you something. This is my daughter, Angela, and you're not going nowhere with her. Oh, Mum, please. Mrs. Larton, I'm not forcing your daughter, really. <laughs> Who do you think you are talking to me like that in my house? Oh, Mum, please don't talk that. I'll just walk out and leave. Look, Ali, I'm sorry about this. Are you coming to see the flat, Mrs. Martin? I'm not going nowhere. Oh, Mum, come on, it's only down the road. No. Oh, come on, someone's waiting downstairs. They can wait. Let me tell you something. This is my daughter. She's 18 years of age. She's a young woman. 10 out of 10 for observation. Shh, don't you learn? I know how you feel, Mrs. Martin. You? You know how I feel? Have your children, child? No. Do you know what it's like to bring up a child in a strange country? No support, no money, having to go on your hands and knees to clean up after dirty people? You know I don't, Mrs. Martin. Well, I have. And the only thing that kept me alive was my daughter. Look, Angela's not leaving because she doesn't care for you. She just needs to find her own way. Things are different now. We both know it's not going to be easy. Are you coming, Mrs. Martin? No. Well, I'm, I'm not going nowhere. Oh, come on. I'm Mom. staying at my house and my home. Well, I'm going now. Angela will leave you the address and phone number. You're more than welcome any time. I'll see you downstairs, Angie. Oh, Mum, please try to understand. I'll try. But I don't think I will. Oh, for God's sake, Mum, it's only down the road. But it's not here! I don't know what to say. Mum, if class wants to tell my sing tomorrow. You've got a lot to learn. Because everybody's there. <laughs> just seems all right, cosy and free. Well, I feel free anyway. Yeah. I can do what I like. Mm. To an extent. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it being at home. My parents used to get me for being unemployed. Wasn't getting any attention. Mum and Dad was always fighting. It was a weird family as it goes. We never spoke to each other. Me? I just remember running down the police stations, get my dad off my mum, or get my mum to get her head out of the gas oven. But then again, mum, she had a lot to do. She always seemed to be in hospital, having babies. Let's say you're in your parents' home. You're not going to get married. You're leaving home to be independent. What's the difference between a woman doing that and a man doing that? How easy is it for a man and how easy is it for a woman? I mean, it's much easier for a man to stay at home because a man tends to have more freedom at home anyway because parents aren't worried about boys going out at night and things because the same things that happen to women don't happen to men, you know? Like, the thing is, we're talking about leaving home, but the reality is, right, there's all different circumstances, but there isn't a provision for single people that's easy to leave home. Like so Denise is saying, she doesn't think about it because it's not going to be an easy thing and it isn't so unbearable for her in the family home, right? So I say in my situation was the three women in my family all went to college, right? And so we all left home when we went to college. And like when you go to college, there's places where they get your bed sits and then you get flats and all that. Right, whatever ends up. Look, this one wants three people. Good idea, isn't it? Mandy, I'm happy where I am. Hundred pound deposit? You're off your rocker. What? Are you serious? Yeah, we could be. Going to flat now as you are, all over a stupid row. What do you mean, it's well? That's an argument I've had every day for the past two months. I want to be left alone. I want some peace. I've been thinking about it for ages. Beverly, you're an adult and you've got a cleaning job. 
£25 a week. So, DHSS? Mandy, we know it's going to be hard. We don't expect to move into a flat and it be easy. But what are you going to do when you want a bit of love and a bit of warmth and you're feeling depressed? You can't go and sit on your mum's knee. Well, I'd go and sit on a radiator. <laughs> Mandy, we just want a flat. We can go home. No one's saying we've got to stay there forever. It's not the same. Spend all that money on a useless trip, feel cheated and scared, just like giving up. Because when they see you coming and they see you're black, they're all so nice, but they want you back. Well, yeah, I'm black and I'm proud to be, but there's one damn thing that angers me. How come it myself just look so low, calling to those pigs who want my dough? Landlords are aware about the money they pick. Only white ones, please. We don't want a black. All I want is a place my own, my scarf, the spout, just to get her home. I'm single, female, on my own, with very little money, nowhere to call home. The landlord's weary, look at me funny when I say, that's right, no job, no money. Women have come down and maybe managed to secure themselves some accommodation. Now the thing is that they've got no money for fares or, or for travel, and they have no money initially to pay the first week's rent and the deposit. So they go to the DHSS and say, oh, we want, um, I, I would like you know, an emergency payment in order to secure my accommodation. And if all you get is a voucher and a few quid for bus fares, now there's no way you're going to keep hold of that accommodation. Hold the line, social security man. Have you ever been on the streets with nowhere to go and nothing to eat? Mr. Recess place to live. It's not necessarily what you would call a home. When are you leaving, Jack? Week after next when I get the keys. Is it? Oh, you're leaving? Yep. You lucky thing. I hate this place. Honestly, I'm swear I'm getting out of there. So we all move to some semi-detached flats in Blackheath. <laughs> or St John's Wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Do you know, it's been the first time in four years I let you be on my own. Not having to worry about having enough money to go from one dull office to the other, mm. or having somewhere to sleep at night, and living with mad people. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> this place is about half way out, you know. 
It's somewhere to live, but it's not really a home. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Caroline! What do you want? I'm washing my hair. You left a note in the bath. Yeah, please clean the bath. Well, you put it there, you clean it. <laughs> For God's sake, you're so bloody petty. Mm. And you've been in the bath, you better not have used all the hot water up either. That's everything, Bill. I suppose the list will be working by now. Bag, purse, coat. What if they're not working though? There's a cup of coffee before I go. Oh, bloody hell! I'm really sick of this, look at it! I liked it my first meeting. A flat, all to myself. How thrilling. Before I go, bloody hell! You, the last time, the last time I went out, the list weren't working. How to walk upstairs? You don't know how frightening that is. You don't know how awful that is. You get on the corridors when there's no lanterns and the doors are burst open. This place needs to clean. Yeah. Maybe I should clean this place. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Clean this today, but I'll be ready to go out tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to clean the carpet. One more worry, man. Just clean the carpet. That's what I do today. I stay and I clean the carpet. You hear people who might be walking three blocks away and they sound like they're outside your front door. You hear a window smash three blocks away and you think, my God, it's the downstairs window. I only had to put up with that for what was, you know, about six months. Some people have to live there all their lives. What's your place like? My glorified shoebox. I'm kind of like birds and clouds. <laughs> she doesn't say too thrilled, does she? I'm not. It gets lonely. Because you moved to fish rice, yeah. I thought I wouldn't care where it was, you know. Anywhere would be good for me. That's what I thought. It's the first time I've been out, apart from work this week. Why? Right. Don't I can't seem to make the effort. It's oh. dangerous any time of night or day, really. Oh. God, whatever I let myself in for. <laughs> for a start, let's talk about, I mean, money. That, uh, on the whole, women's financial situation is still dire, <clears> very <throat> bad. That. Uh, accommodation is expensive, living on your own is expensive. Take, for instance, a woman who, through no choice, is living in a very bad situation with someone. She either has a part-time job, which wouldn't cover her to, to go out and find a place to live and live independently on her own. Uh, she's in a bad situation, she can't get out of it because, there, A, there are no homes to go to. I mean, the estates, and since they've shut down the single uh, the special letting scheme in most local councils has made the situation even worse. Oh, good morning. afternoon. You must have had a good night. You look terrible. Can I help you, please? Incorporated, can I help you? Incorporated. Sorry, I'm engaged. Can you phone later? Sorry, the line's engaged. I thought you'd like to know I get bashed about in my home sweet home. I'd really like to leave that man of mine, but I just can't do it. He's so divine. First time I decided that I would go, it was a big mistake with me on my own. I remember I went to that horrible dump with that randy landlord. He was a lump. Why should I bother for the second time around? Just a load of hassle, that's all I found. Just greedy landlords who want your dough, especially when they know that you're on your own. If I tried harder with my man, he might not give me such a tan. So I'm going back to my love nest, because homes with landlords aren't really best. Ali, you are mad. If I leave, I lose everything. If I stayed, I could make it better. Well, it's just that I want to be helped. It's not as if I love him that much or anything. You're going to have to do something. 
Well, from court play, can I help you, please? Yeah, but where do I start? Well, at least I've never had kids before, Ali. Look, let's go and see the supervisor. No, I don't. Look, come on, you can't do anything in that state. Dry wise, I'm going to go see the supervisor and see a few days off to get yourself sorted out. No, I don't think so. Oh, go on. Is your husband at work? Yes, he should be. Well, we can go around yours, get some of your stuff, and you can stay around mine for a few days, eh? And what then? You'd kill me if I went back after that. I don't have to go back, Ali. Well, like I said before, well, at least never had any kids. Tomorrow we'll go to council, house and anywhere. We'll get yourself sorted out, don't you worry. What if that woman has kids? I mean, you know, we all know about those stories about women who have children who have got out of, um, you know, a marital situation or a live-in situation where they're bunged in bed and breakfast, which are demoralising, the conditions are very bad, and they have no contact with, say, you know, with a normal situation. And it's, you know, basically demoralising and dehumanising. Uh, a lot of the housing agents we went to mentioned that fact, say if a woman and her family are taken out and put in bed and breakfast. Um, they could be living in Tower, Tower Hamlets originally, and they're put in bed and breakfast in Euston. So they're miles and miles away from their family and their friends. Okay. So you come back. Hello, Marie. Oh, what do you want? I want you. <laughs> you hear the child in Miss Perotti? After she walked out to my house, says she wants independence. When men get it, then what you want me for now? Can you ask him, little child? How are you, Marie? Hello, Mrs. Perotti. So where's Mike? Mm -hmm. Mom, this is Mikey. Mike is a lazy, good for nothing boy. She said she'd come out to my house. Please, Mom, I want to talk. You what? No, man, stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. You never want to talk when Mike is standing there. Hmm, him stubborn as well. Well, we know where she gets that from, don't we, Angela? <laughs> Why don't we sit down and talk about this properly? Marie, sit down. No, sit down. If it's money, I have none. Yes, I know what you want. You want to come home, isn't it? You want to come home because you're pregnant. And then you want to know how your mother knows so you're pregnant. You see them breasts? Them stand down two miles in front of you, and you want me to talk? Please, ma'am, no, child, no, 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 you bring me trouble, always trouble. Is Mikey with you now? Is Mikey with you now? Me say, is Mikey with you now? He talked about him saying down wildly. I'm saying the want you. She come out to my house. She can't cook. She can't clean. Said she want independence now. You suck out all the milk out of my breast and yet you still want more? I'm saying no, child. No, no, no. But Angela, calm down. Look, sit down and talk about this properly. Your mum's upset, Marie. Look, would you like me to leave? No, you're not leaving. You're welcome. She's not. She hurt me and I don't want her in my house. Well, look, calm down, Angela. Just be reasonable about this. Talk. Talk all you want. I told Mikey. Mikey. I love Mikey and Mikey loves me. Angela, listen to me. Mama, last night, he was angry. He hit me. He said he wanted me to leave. Mama, he's different. He's changed. Mikey gets what he wants. I know him. I want you. No, Mama, I don't know what to stand up to man. I'm 18. I have the strength to stand up. I was frightened. Last night, Mama, in the room of my woman, they have two picnic together. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was angry. I was hurt. My kid. Mama, I'm scared. I'm frightened. I don't know what we do. Mama, you tell me what we do. No, you only feel like a big independent woman. I know you come back screwed up like a child. You see, he won't take responsibility, so you have to take it for him. And darling, you need big, strong shorts for that, and you don't have it. Will you keep the child? Yes! Well, then, you see, you stop when I get you. I could have told you, warned you, helped you, but no. I love Mikey, and Mikey loves me. You had this for nothing I have to say. I have this for nothing you had to say. I heard you, but I never listened. So what a sense of having ears. Mama, maybe if you answer my letters, answer my cards, maybe my fun in your but nothing was out of cook right now. You listen to me now, child. I told you, independence is hard. You don't just... No, no, that is not freedom. And let me tell you something before you come out of my house. The ball is in your court. And right now, me not too feel like playing tennis. Miss Perot, I'm not you want me in here. Jesus.
I've got, I don't know, I've got these romantic ideas, they eh, sort of huge spacious rooms with marble floors with nothing but a mop and a bucket in the corner and a, a huge mirror, no mirror window and then just a wee bed in the corner and that, but that's just ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, because I just collect junk all the time, see. So. Do you see that house over there, behind the trees? The one with the turrets at the back, can you see it? I want to live there. One day I'm going to have a house just like that. I come up here a lot when I want to be away from the others. Oh, no, wait. Don't get me wrong. I like them. They're nice girls, a bright laugh. It's just that, well, sometimes I need to be quiet, away from the sound of radios and TVs and other things. This is my favourite place. I just stand here thinking that's my house. I always wanted to live in a house. My family, we had a flat. It was great to leave home. A real adventure. I'd never go back now. I suppose you grow up so much quicker when you have to think for yourself. Sure, there's loads of times when everything goes wrong and all you really want to do is run home. But you don't. You stick it out because it's worth it. I grew up when I left home. That house, it's so beautiful. I will have a house like that one day because I want it and because I'm prepared to fight for it. It's worth it in the end, when you get what you want. Greetings, in the holy name of Jesus our Saviour. I hope you find you in good health. I'm just writing a few lines to find out how you are keeping and how you are coping. Is Donna treating you all right? Can you cope? Is he staying with you? Because I know these where the boys are. Don't look after you and treat you bad. How are you finally looking after yourself now? Hard? You never realised how life was so easy for you 
at home. Now it's you who have to do everything and make a home. Is he helping the bills? Can you cope? Is there food in the cupboard? I know you must be thinking I'm worried for nothing. But I never did tell you how hard it was for me when I first did get married. And I don't know what to tell the pain of love, even though I made nine. You sure you want to stay with him? What about the comeback? I got some really nice curtains for my bedroom now. But if you don't want to come back, I will be forcing you. After all, you need that big girl child now. You made your decision. But no matter how big you grow, you still my girl child. Anyway, darling, before I write this letter, you see the cat when he says hello. You see the eye when he says hello. Brothers Don and Peter say hello. <laughs> Then the people are still fighting, you know. They will never grow up. You don't talk so much love. But I will try and talk to you. And when you know I'll be going. But remember, from one mother to another to be, no one has to cry. Just keep strong. God kill fear. Mama. Life in the big wide world. Little girl in the big wide world. Tired now, but can't come home. Love you, but what's in that letter? All that making noise is true. But I must find my own way! <laughs> <laughs>